Welcome back. Uh, here's my idea of a cinematic shot. Now, clearly, I won't be winning any Oscars anytime soon, so let's just get on with the blueprint. In the last video, we had created an aim offset, and now we're going to apply it to our character. Also added a rifle preview to the skeletal mesh, but now we need to bring that into the game itself. And the way we do that is to go into the um, blueprint event graph and use a event begin play. Now I've already made these nodes just to speed things along. So you start with the uh, begin play event and then you spawn actor from class. Okay, you type this, this node is spawn. There it is, spawn actor from class and you'll get this node and then you'd use this drop down to select the rifle blueprint. Now we made the rifle blueprint um, previously in an earlier video. So basically it's just um, sorry it's the wrong file there is the rifle blueprint it, it is just an empty blueprint there are no nodes or anything and it, the key point here is that it inherits from a skeletal mesh so you just need to create that and then we bring it in into our blueprint and just spawn it and then attach actor to component okay so attach the actor to the component means um, the parent will be the mesh your character's mesh and this is the target to attach to the mesh and you give the socket name here okay weapon socket we, we made we created this weapon socket on the skeletal mesh and then just do snap to target and this node also requires uh, a spawn transform so i just use the actress transform okay so this will attach it to the hand bone that we had created in in a previous video and just to uh, look at it again in case you uh, you missed it. It is right here. Atom skeletal mesh. Okay, if you go to the skeleton tab, and this is where we added it to the right hand weapon socket, and we added the rifle preview. So I just copied weapon socket uh, name from here and attached it into the blueprint. Okay. So that's where weapon socket come from. You, now you can spawn the weapon someplace else. For, for example, you can attach a socket to the character's back or anywhere else and spawn this rifle over there. And then when combat is toggled on, you can just sp uh, attach actor to component again and then snap it to the hand bone. That's one way to equip and unequip a weapon. But we'll look at that in a later video. Uh, it, it involves a bit more uh, groundwork for us to lay down. So I'm just going to comment that as create rifle actor at start of play. Okay. In case you're wondering where this mesh came from, if you select show inherited variables and then go into character, you can see that everything uh, that's attached to this character can be shown here so and, and then you can go up to different levels of inheritance and all of these variables are variables. so I just dragged the mesh from here and attached it to over there okay next up we attach the aim offset in the anim blueprint so just close this and go into Adam blueprint and the anim blueprint okay um, I've also created all of these nodes already. So what you do is you start with the sequence uh, node and just drag a pin off there. And the very first thing you want to do is to check if you're in combat mode. Okay, whenever, because this execution line is executed every frame, you want to look for any excuse not to run it. So if you are not in combat mode, you don't need any of this. So we just check for that here and then skip it if it's not needed. Okay, now the way we, we need pitch and yaw to calculate the aim offset. Okay, so you just create these two variables, yaw and pitch, okay, and they're floats. And the way we calculate is that we get the control rotation. We, we get where the camera is looking at. And then from that, we subtract where the actor is rotated towards. And that gives us the pitch and yaw that we need. Okay, now I've done uh, 
a bit more here than just that. I've kind of interpolated the thing. So we do get the pitch and yaw, but once pitch and yaw changes, it changes slowly. It doesn't snap. So it's it's a much more smoother movement. What you could do is you could just drag this up in and go directly over here. And if you break the rotation, you get pitch and yaw, and that's that's what you're looking for basically. What I've done here is I've uh, I've used an interpolation node to interpolate from what it should be in this frame uh, from what it was in the previous frame. Okay, so if these two values were set in the previous frame, in this frame it'll come here, and this is the new target and it will use delta seconds to interpolate it to the new target okay and i've used an interpolation speed of eight and it, it this works for me you will need to experiment with this and figure this out for yourself and that's how you do interpolation basically then on the anim graph side of things you you go here and well we'll get to this node in a second but basically what you would have currently is uh, in, the, in the previous video we had a locomotion state machine and it was going directly into the final animation pose but now we've uh, we've cancelled that link and we're putting the locomotion state machine into a locomotion cache okay so you drag a pin from here and just do cache okay it's a new saved cache pose okay and then you name it you can name it whatever you want and the reason we do this is because the state machine can only go into one input and we need to use this state machine multiple times so we save it into a cache and then, then that cache is reused wherever that state machine is needed so basically this is what we're adding okay this is the aim offset we created in the previous video so if you go into the asset browser find it drag it here and this is the, the node you will get and pitch and yaw are the variables we just created so just attach those and it requires a locomotion cache input okay so we we use this node basically we're attaching the locomotion state machine as the base pose and then we want to drag this and attach it to the final animation pose but we only want the aim offset to apply if we are in combat mode so you you do a blend poses by bool okay and it should be available as blend blend by bool okay blend poses by bool and it will apply the true pose if combat mode is on and if it if it's not and then it'll just go directly to locomotion and the character will run as he was previously when combat mode is toggled off and that's all there is to applying the aim offset so let me just close that and close this the last thing we need to do is to auto rotate the character if he aims his weapon too far to one side so let me just give you an example of that go into combat mode and uh, the aim offset is applied at this point so if you keep turning to one side you'll see the character's legs are not moving but if you go too far the whole character moves okay and the reason we do this is because if we don't once you go too far in one direction the character will suddenly snap and it'll suddenly be aiming the gun in the other direction and that just breaks everything so the way to fix that is to go in the blueprint we will take where the camera is looking at and where the actor is looking at then we will turn the actor to look in the same direction as the camera uh, if if they are off by a certain number of degrees so if, if it's the difference is too much then we'll just turn the entire actor to point in the same direction as the camera okay and the way we do this is to get the control rotation uh, this is where the camera is looking at and this is where the actor is rotated towards okay I mean, we, what we want is the difference in the yaw between the two of them so we get that difference and if that difference is uh, more than a certain number of degrees in my case I've set it to 70 and I've used an absolute value node to get rid of the sign because uh, the, it can rotate in either direction so we don't we, we could be positive or negative number so just use this node to get rid of the sign and if it's the difference is more than uh, this number of degrees then this condition fires and what this does is it it changes the actors world rotation and basically if the difference is 70 degrees then you want it to change by 70 degrees in the opposite direction so 
uh, so the actor is then rotating rotated straight towards where the camera wherever the camera is looking at okay and I've interpolated this whole thing so you use this interpolation node to give you a whole range of numbers from 0 to 70 okay so it'll give you the whole range of rotations from from uh, 0 degrees to 70 degrees so and uh, you get delta time from the from the tick event okay so you'll need to create this tick event get the delta time this uh, node will give you a small increment per frame and then you add that increment to the to the actor the, what the rest of these nodes are doing is to make sure that uh, this whole thing goes smoothly because if you turn the actor fast enough this value can actually go beyond 70 so it might like go 75 or 80 and then what will happen is that it'll it'll start turning and this value starts going down but as soon as it goes down below 70 even a little bit then this condition will turn off and uh, none of, and these rotations will stop so we don't we don't want that to happen because otherwise it'll just be stuck at 70 and we want the actor to look straight ahead so we want it to go all the way to zero degrees okay we want this number to go all the way down to zero so what we do is uh, after this condition is set we set another bool value okay so I created this bool value and we turn it on here and then we start adding these rotations and then we check if this yaw value is close to zero Okay, not exactly zero, but close to zero. So I've I've set a tolerance of two degrees for this nearly equals node. So if you know if it's close enough, then we can turn it off. Otherwise, these rotations will just keep on adding. Okay, and then this whole thing is has been reset, and then it again checks if it's if it's gone too far based on this seventy degrees condition. And because this is running on the event tick right event take you want to make sure you have you basically you want any excuse not to run this whole thing so if you're not in combat mode you don't need any of this don't run it okay so that's essentially how you do it and I'm just scrolling around so you can look if you need to and uh, I think that's basically it for this video just to review again you have a we have a character he can go into combat mode he can turn around aim offset is working strafing is working going backwards and forwards get out of combat mode and he can run around and he can jump and do other stuff now this does break some things for example if you're in combat mode you can no longer jump and if you jump you <laughs> you'll start doing this but out of combat mode he can jump just fine and the reason is that because uh, we need to create more states in our uh, in our anim graph. So where is it? Locomotion. Okay, right. So if you're not in combat mode, you can jump. But if you are in combat mode, there's nothing. So all of these nodes need to be recreated, or the combat versions need to be added, and then. In, in the upcoming videos we can look at that and we will also look at how to fire the weapon and how to do traces to to see what can be hit or what is being hit and we also need to equip and unequip the weapon so all of that is in future videos. One last thing I want to mention is that we don't have any animations for turning while in combat mode so you might notice you know his, his feet kind of just drift on the floor and that, that can be fixed if we had the animations and it'll be really easy because we're, we've all, we're already set up for this. So if you go into the, the blueprint, if you look here, what you can do is if, if this condition is on, if it's on, you can fire off a message to the anim graph, to the anim blueprint, and that blueprint can turn, uh, can show a turning animation. But we don't, since we don't have any, and we're using stuff from the uh, f the free stuff from the marketplace we're just going to leave it like this and in fact you'll f you'll find that many games even well-known games often do this uh, many times what will happen is they might place the camera in such a position that you can never see the feed or you know you could just leave it like that it is a game after all and this works fine too but if you have these animations or if you have animators that can create them then then uh, that's excellent excellent in our blueprint is already set up to 
to use that. So that's it for this video and well thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.